Hello everyone and welcome back to the Magitech mini series tutorials where uh, we showcase basic Magitech functionality in bite-sized chunks. And uh, right now we're going to be looking at uh, maybe the most complicated uh, topic of um, unit testing your subgraphs with Magitech and that is testing functions, smart contract functions. Now, Essentially, how we're going to how we're going uh, about this is we are uh, specifying the name of the, uh, the the sorry the address of the smart contract, then the function name, then the function arguments, and we're saying when when this exact function gets called, return this value. Uh, this strategy is used in most unit testing frameworks, um, and its purpose is that um, in your handlers, when you actually call that function it will return the marked value that you've specified in the tests, just so you can test out your mapping logic using different return values um, and different functions. If I, I hope that makes sense, but I'm sure it will once we actually see that in action. So to get started with that, we have to import um, create, um, sorry, new, new uh, create uh, marked function from match the KS. Uh, we will also import the, um, no, we're not gonna import a search for now. Um, all right, so first things first, we have to specify uh, a, a value, um, a value which we, we will be using for the arguments. So that will be um, arg1, let's say, if we, if we had multiple arguments, the logic will be exactly the same, just with, uh, just with multiple arguments in the arguments array. Let me show you what I mean. So we will do uh, ethereum dot value. Uh, all values we, we work with come from the ethereum value, uh, ethereum value type. So value from string, and we will say that this is our argument. For instance, yeah, if we have a string argument, um, we can do this with all the all of the other um, types uh, available, of course. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to say. Uh, we're going to instantiate the args array because the arguments to a mock function is always an array of values. Uh, so let's say Ethereum, no, sorry, uh, it's an array of Ethereum value. And uh, in our case, it's just going to be equal to this, um, our, our string argument inside. Uh, cool. So this is most of the setup that we need. Then what we're going to do is um, we're going to say, so we're going to actually use the function that we imported, create mock function. And this expects a lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, so first off is the contract address. So the reason we need to specify um, the contract address is because we can have, you can, you can um, index multiple um, subgraphs, right? And they can have a lot of, they, 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 they can use a lot of smart contracts and different smart contracts can have functions with the same names and uh, it can get a bit confusing. So that's why we need to specify the exact contract address and the function name for that specific uh, smart contract. So um, contract is not a string, it's an address. Uh, and we can do that with address from string. Um, we need to... Uh, we need to import it, sorry. So we need to import address from graphs, yes. Um, and then, now we're not gonna be using args array. I'm just gonna use some generic, it really doesn't matter as long as it's a valid address. Uh, cool, so then we have to specify the name of the function. So we can do function uh, underscore name. Uh, then we need to specify uh, the function signature, which is important because uh, Solid Solidity uh, supports function overriding, which means that you can have different functions with the same name, but with different function signature that do the different things. So we need to specify the signature, uh, which in our case will be function name. Uh, sorry. Uh, you know what? Let's just yeah, let's just keep the uh, solidity naming conventions here. So our, our, our function is called func name. And then the function signature is func name um, like this. So it doesn't expect arguments and it doesn't return. Uh, it's a void. Um, of course, 
it's not really void because we are going to return a result. But this is only for uh, testing. So we're not going to be receiving real functions. Um, we just rely on the contract address and the contract um, and the contract and, and the function name. So yeah, we're going to say it returns a string. Uh, cool. So what we're going to do now is um, let me just up my notes. Um, yeah, so then we have to do dot with args again, like in most JavaScript testing frameworks. Um, then we're just going to put in the args array because we, we need to specify the exact arguments that come in. Uh, cool. Uh, so my ID is complaining again because it thinks that this is um, TypeScript. But as we know, this is assembly script. So uh, this these kind of issues don't really matter. I just haven't fixed my ID. Sorry about that. Uh, and then what we can do is we can say dot returns and we say what this function in this contract address with this name and this signature returns so that when this function gets called in the mappings, it will do its job and return the value that we've mocked. Cool. So returns and we can say um, it returns on Ray and it's going to return. Um, it's going to return Ethereum dot value from string and let's say result. The reason it returns an array is just because that's how it is in graph node. It's an array and then we always get the first element since it's just one value, it's just one string. All right, so it's going to return that. Again, ID complains, don't worry about that. And uh, we're almost done. So we're going to do let result. And now in the result, what we can do is we can we can just call Ethereum call. And then um, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this because it's it's uh, it's kind of a big one. Uh, but I'll explain in a minute what, what happens. Let's say result. All right, so this is what needs to happen. We are call, we are doing ethereum.call. We are instantiating a smart contract call. The contract name is uh, con name, but I think we said something different here. Oh, we didn't, okay, it can be a con name. Then we have um, address from string, which is this address. And keep in mind, you will not need to do this in your handlers. You are already um, using those values in your handlers. So this is just for testing out this completely mocked function, but this will work for you when uh, you call your functions. All right, then we have address from string. Then we have func name. This is going to be a string because we are returning a string. Uh, cool. And yeah, we're then here you can see we are getting the first element of the resulting array. All right, I know that was a lot. Sorry about that, but it's just it's not that easy to test out um, call handlers like it is with event handlers. Um, all right, and then last but not least, we have to import the assert namespace from match the chaos so that we can actually check our result. Um, and we're just gonna do equals. Uh, although I think we can actually do, uh, no, because it returns an event, uh, an Ethereum value. So we're gonna say um, Ethereum value from string result. And we're gonna give it our result that is coming from calling the function. So let's run that. There you go. Can mock contract call test is working fine. Uh, again, take a peek at the documentation for uh, more information and more examples. Just one last thing, uh, and I know it's that this video is going to turn out quite long, but we can also revert. Uh, so we can actually test out if, if a function reverts. I just copied and pasted this over uh, because I want to bore you with the details, but it's the exact same process. We need to specify a contract address, a function name, uh, yeah, the function name is revert in this case. And then here, instead of doing with args, um, I, I mean, we can do with args because it can, it can take um, arguments and then fail. But instead of doing returns, we are doing dot reverts. And that will mark the function as a reverting function, um, which means that uh, basically, um, yeah, it will it will fail. It will revert, and the value that we get back will be null. Cool. That's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.